हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू अन ब्रांड न्यू डे फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ डॉक्टर चेस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी वांटेड टू ट्राई आउट सिंस अ लॉन्ग टाइम एंड फाइनली इट हैज अराइव्ड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेल एंड वेरी हैप्पी टू सी सो मेनी ऑफ यू ऑनलाइन सो थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग इन सो फर्स्टली this is going to be a weekly thing so every week on uh on thursday mostly we'll try to uh <coughs> begin with uh the episodes of dr chess so the first episode is today the next one next week and the idea is to interact with all of you uh who are present here who are trying so hard for chess improvement uh and um the chess with comedians has not ended uh, it is uh, 30 episodes we did at a stretch without a day of single break yeah it's amazing uh, and um, we took a day off for this and then from tomorrow once again it will begin so it's going to be uh, an ongoing series so you stay tuned for that um. right so what what's the plan uh, the the reason why we started this uh, is because you know when when i was improving as a chess player chess improvement was very tough for me because i had no real trainers uh, i was working on chess on my own and uh, <clears throat> i actually worked really hard to improve i i read lot of books mm-hmm. hundreds of books worked with softwares uh, and and this kind of made my progress very slow but at the same time i did learn a lot about how to improve at chess and i want to try this out i want to thank niklesh jain who had this concept of chess doctor 2 uh, years ago and finally we are able to to uh, do it so how how does this work is i'm going to share my screen with you uh, and see if you can check here yeah so this is how it will work this one is our discord server over here so you need to be at the appointment lobby here uh which is present on our discord server the link is in the description so once you come to the appointment lobby uh you you will be pulled into one of you will be pulled randomly into dr chess uh, room where you can talk with me one on one okay so that's that's the idea and uh let's see uh, how how we begin on this uh, i think i think you can hear me well yeah so no issues with the sound as such okay let's let's see there are two people right now chin to clear let's first of all have just one so that i can talk to uh only one of them and okay let me see if if you can hear uh the other person hello hello good morning sir hi chintukle aryan 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 hi aryan how are you uh, i'm fine aryan uh, is it possible to switch on your uh, uh video from where there is a video option below if you can switch it on then please try so that people can see you Okay, wonderful, Aryan. We can see you. Yeah. So, uh, how are you? I'm fine. You're fine. You are up very early today. Yeah. I would like to ask. Yeah, tell me. Uh, I get up at six a.m. Six a.m. You woke up. Oh, I think you muted yourself somehow. How? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Your voice is not so stable. Can you say something? Hello. Yeah, okay. So Aryan tell me, uh what's your rating? 1821. 1821. Okay. And and what is uh, happening to you? What's the chess chess problem that you're facing? Uh if I just buy I don't know how to, after uh, 
against accelerated dragon yeah. and uh, what is the plan of black also because they both with white and black okay so what aryan basically wants to know is how to play with white against accelerated dragon yeah yep okay let's maruxi bind maruxi bind okay let's let's see if i if you can uh see my screen let's see and then i can show you a few things <coughs> So are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So let me uh get sorry for that. Uh yeah, let me get the chessboard here. You can see yeah. the chessboard? Yes. Okay. So basically after e4 c5, knight f3, knight c6 or they go g6. whatever be the move order you go d4 yeah. takes takes knight c6 and now you go c4, c4. and uh, basically black has two ways to play this system i think one is knight f6 the other one is bishop g7 uh, i play bishop g7 yeah if you play bishop g7 i play bishop e3 then knight f6 knight f6 knight c3 bishop Uh, D6. Bishop. No, D6. D6. Yeah, D6. Uh, I think there are uh, there are couple of moves. One is Bishop E2. The other one is also I think F3 here. Yeah. Uh, and then you castle perhaps. Yeah. Queen D2. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe we can we can start with Bishop E2. Uh, castles, and uh, let's say castles. then bishop d7 yeah bishop d7 and some people say that this move order is not the most accurate for for white uh, for black because you want to take on d4 and play bishop c6 uh, yes. so now you can just remove your knight so this is one line you should think about because this was played against me by barua you know this uh, grandmaster yes dibendu barua yeah. the west bengal is from west yeah so i'll just uh, quickly show you that uh, game if i can pull it up yeah this one so what happened was i played the same line with black and uh, he he played this bishop e2 castles and i played bd7 and he went knight c2 and then i was i was yeah. thinking to myself like you know i should have actually first taken on d4 Bishop takes and then B D seven, so that now I can place oh, my. But, bishop. but here he can play B four. Yeah, B four. And then uh, uh, is is it very strong? No, but I mean, uh, play A five. Is it possible? A three. Yeah. So so what you are saying is that here, uh, Bishop D seven. and then if suppose yeah. he plays queen d2 then takes takes bishop c6 b3 a5 he is no yeah. no time to play b4 yeah okay sounds logical sounds logical so in general knight c2 is not like uh, bad or i mean doesn't lead black into a bad position but you know i yeah. went a6 uh, rook c1 rook c8 f3 uh, in general i mean white has more space and so it makes sense for him to avoid uh, peace exchanges that was the point i mean here if i take here then rook b3 and traps the queen yes. so i think eventually i got just crushed in this position like he he played very strong chess uh, h4 was very aggressive <laughs> g4 and and he went on to kind of uh, checkmate me in this position i have seen this game you have seen this game Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so what is your main issue, like from white side or from black side? Um. Uh, after uh, after development, what is the basic plan of white against black? See, for example, let's say we don't go for knight c two lines, okay, and and we play say yes. queen d two, knight d four, bishop d four, 
bishop c6 i don't know if you attended yesterday's show uh, with the comedians but i played a game with white uh, in this yes. line yeah. you saw it yeah yeah so a5 b3 and the main plan is uh, most of the times to go rook b1 rook c1 and when he offers an exchange of the bishops to not exchange them because imagine bishop e3 yeah imagine he goes here then takes takes somehow your dark squares become slightly weak so in general if you can preserve this bishop uh, that would be very nice uh, so you can just yeah. play rook c1 rook b1 then a3 b4 expand on the queen side um if at some point i mean usually it's queen side play and knight d5 ideas uh, yeah. sometimes you can also get king side play for black i mean when when i was uh, studying this it was more like knight c5 uh, rook c1 queen b6 rook a b1 rook c8 and now you know that a3 doesn't work because of uh, knight into b3 knight b3 yeah guys who are who are watching this i'm i'm going a little fast for aryan because he's a very strong player yeah he's rated uh 218 uh, but i think he's already very strong by the way uh i guess people can actually uh can hear me well so so there's no problem aryan uh a3 and so therefore many people what they do is in this position they go bishop f2 and then when you go knight c5 rook c1 queen b6 rook a b1 rook b8 you can already play a3 now uh, because now yeah. knight b3 doesn't work because of queen d1 yeah and and you lose a piece because bish queen is hanging and knight is hanging when the bishop was on e3 it would be hanging there is one more plan of white i guess bishop f1 g3 bishop g possible possible but i think ba basically better is to go like rook c2 uh, uh, if you don't go bishop f2 if you go bishop e3 then go uh, here rook c2 and i think there was a very nice game uh, that that i showed yesterday which was a5 h5 if your opponent plays then now you can play a3 and uh, the point yeah. was that if it takes here on b3 which is looking like the same thing what changed i i don't see it there is this move knight d5 and now i think white is better do you agree yeah okay and if it plays say queen d8 then i think you can go b4 already uh, ab a b and i i like white's position somehow you know like white is playing white has improved his position he's got more space if you go knight a4 i can jump in with knight d5 i i just feel like black has to be very accurate to at least hold equality here and white yeah. has a very smooth play so in general if you're playing with black maybe you shouldn't go into this line uh there was one line which i i had thought of when i was preparing is actually here uh to bishop e3 go knight c5 and after uh, say rook c1 to play uh, i think it was bishop e5 here and the idea is after rook b1 to play e6 and then develop your queen to h4 it's a, it's a very tricky line you can't ever play f4 because i take on c3 and take on e4 um and when you play queen h4 if you go g3 then sometimes i can sack my bishop i can also break with f5 and so it's more like a aggressive setup in the opening yes so you can have a look at this basically as a as a additional weapon okay okay sounds good yes okay aryan uh, i'm going to stop sharing my screen uh and uh tell me a bit about uh yourself like is i can see your fan i can't see your face so are you are you bored in this lockdown or are you working on chess uh i'm working to us and then playing tournaments on weekends oh you're playing online tournaments yeah okay okay fantastic and uh you know this lockdown 
you had plans maybe to play lot of tournaments yeah which is now gone because of the lot yeah but doesn't affect you not really but okay good good and uh, thanks for joining in i i have met you right before yeah where in Bo- in bhopal open in bhopal open okay okay good good aryan i uh, hope your uh, doubt was cleared yeah uh, and and uh, hopefully we can meet again uh i'll i'll yeah. write down uh, uh about you so that i remember maybe next time if ever you come on the stream we can not i mean we will avoid discussing the same problem again because hopefully it is solved okay okay thank you thank you bye okay guys uh let's see who's next let's see who would be uh, next uh, sanjay pradnesh hello 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 uh, sanjay can you switch off your uh, youtube i think sanjay is listening to my youtube and now he's gone okay ajinkya atle is here let's see yeah aryan is 16 very talented youngster nice to start off chess doctor with him i'm just making some notes to make sure that whatever we discuss is put in here okay uh, ajinkya can you unmute yourself i can't hear you by the way guys in order to join in you need to click on the discord link in the description uh, and then you can join in over there uh, overall okay maybe ajinkya has issues with this so i will disconnect him maybe someone else can join him rohit tidke let's see if rohit can talk rohit you need to unmute yourself maybe i can unmute him or no it's not possible to unmute yeah i think he has to get himself unmuted ah okay rohit can you hear me okay guys be ready you know put your go into the settings go into uh, voice and video and fix your settings before you come on the show so that we don't spend time fixing these things okay maybe rohit is not here okay i'm going to connect what about the next one arya shah arya can you hear me arya is our uh, uh yes sir yeah hi arya how are you Uh, I'm good sir sir how are you I'm good I'm good can you switch on your video for our Oh uh, yes sir definitely yeah yeah oh, Hello fantastic by the way we finally able to see Arya who who is one of the moderators of Chess Base India and also a uh, very strong player yeah you beat Samai very easily I mean it wasn't very easily he <laughs> almost you know, scared, scared he scared me a lot fantastic okay so Arya you where are you right now where do you live Uh, right now, I'm living in the U.S. for the past um, four months. About four months, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you you used Almost to you yeah. were you were in Singapore, right? Right, sir. Yeah, yeah, Singapore. Yeah. And so, why why did you go to the U.S.? U.S. Uh, my dad's job, and I always wanted to study here. So it was like both of them at the same time, and yeah. So we just decided to take the uh, to move over here. So how old are you? Uh, I'm seventeen. You're seventeen, and and what are, what are you studying? Uh, right now I'm in high school, but I I uh my my um I wanna take computer science in the future. While at the same time I wanna play chess. Okay, okay. Uh, and and do you have a preference, or it's like, let's see what of happens. Of course, chess. What is it? If if of course chess. Chess. If, if, um, yeah, of course. So chess over computer science. Of course, yeah. Anytime. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. 
very nice very nice uh, so so tell us uh, how how can i help you you know do you have any chess issues that uh, i can help you with uh yes definitely one of the issues currently i'm facing is that um for some reason i cannot evaluate positions like if there's like i mean of course if there's like piece up i can easily evaluate that this is piece up and uh, white or black is winning but let's say if it's like slightly better um and let's say there's some um you know like uh, let's say white has some space advantage but there's also some weak squares i can never know i can never evaluate like a certain position and go like immediately ah okay white is slightly better here or black is slightly better which also hinders my calculation a bit because after let's say three or four moves i calculate and um let's say i li- i don't know if i like the position or if i don't like the position okay okay so let's let's uh, try to test this today and i i want to see how you think okay so i'm going to share okay. my screen with you uh, and i'm just going to uh, load up a, a random game yep okay. perfect okay so um let let me first Uh, can you see my screen uh yes sir okay let's see let's see i will maybe uh get my one of my re- recent games let's see how how that works uh so this one so uh, i'm playing against a gm and i want to uh, go to let's say move number uh somewhere here okay Okay. So a position filled with lot of weaknesses, lot of points, lot of things happening. How how do you assess such a position in your mind? Uh currently I'm looking at uh then I see that the bishop on um g2 for white. The first thing I see is that it's very weak, very bad. Um so yeah, it needs somewhere to go. Um then I see that black has some extra space on the king side. So black is definitely definitely going to play on the king side so maybe he can go something like um i don't know knight h5 f5 that's my first instinct right now and i also see that white has a lot of space on the um queen side so and also though uh, he's also controlling the open c file so he can always you know make use of it and um yeah also the uh, c5 square is is very weak so um he can get his knights over there so maybe knight a c5 which is exactly i guess what white is trying to do so that's my um, i guess immediate evaluation after looking at the position okay so so how i would i would uh, evaluate is uh, what you said sounds very interesting but it's very random like whenever you're thinking you you are thinking uh, like first you said this pawn is uh, there this bishop looks passive then this idea uh, it could also be that you are live and uh, we are doing this so it's a little bit uh, stressful in that sense let let me see if i can and get your video because if both of them are on the screen that would look better oh yeah um okay let's put this here yeah okay so now you you can be seen oh, one second guys pardon my bad technological yeah yeah no worries yeah i mean it's this code already a very hard thing to use yeah okay so this is at least to some level okay uh, so yeah yeah what what i would do is that in such a position i would start with uh, what i learned from jeremy silman i don't know if you have checked my series on imbalances Ah yes yes sir. I I have yeah um I've also read the uh, book um of of Jeremy Silman very I mean I read the third edition uh, about his imbalances so yeah. yeah so when you when you talk about imbalances very important to understand each individual element like when you talk about say minor pieces first then I would say that my bishop is very active here this one does right. look passive but it's looking at the e4 pawn which is could be strength also weakness so i wouldn't call it a very passive piece at the same right, time yeah. i would definitely call this bishop quite passive because it is you know not able to develop right now easily 
Right. Yeah. So, so in terms of minor pieces, I would say White's minor pieces are slightly better because even these knights are looking at some weaknesses. Yeah, uh, you are right that Black can get some attack here, but right now it looks under control. All of these things. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, moving on, if suppose uh, we go to the next imbalance, which is after minor piece comes. Uh, so I'm I'm going to write down here uh, for people to see. It is first of all minor pieces. How you evaluate a position? So this I have done this before with uh, also the comedians. Ah uh, yes, yeah. Pawn structure, space, material, weak squares. And open files. You have uh, development and initiative. And last one is king safety. So when you meticulously go through each of these things, right? Yeah. Uh, let's say these seven points. Then what will happen is, let's say we looked at minor piece, we came to the conclusion that white has slightly better minor pieces. Then we come to pawn structure. Now, in a way, the pawn structure is symmetrical because here I have four pawns, here you have four pawns, and here two to each. But what happens is that this pawn actually is both a weakness and a strength. So right now you can't be sure whether this pawn will help you because it can help black launch an attack like this, but it could also just fall. Like let's say I play knight c5, knight c5, it'll just fall off. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then we come to space. Uh, I think white has more space as you rightly pointed out on the queen side because his pieces are there. Black has slightly more space on this side of the board because of this pawn on e4. So again, you can say it's a, it's a complex issue. You can't really say who's better. Uh, when you come to material, it's equal. But I think one of the biggest imbalances here, I mean, we, we should talk about is weak squares. And this is where I think you, you need to work on in trying to identify what are the weaknesses in a position. So weaknesses are usually squares which are controlled by the pawns or, or there are holes in the position. So what do you think are the biggest weaknesses here? So I would also go with um, d4 right now, now that I look at it more carefully. You mean this one? Uh, yeah, d4 yeah. and also um, b6, c5. Okay, c5 is, yeah, c5, c7 and... Um, yeah, yeah, like all the dark squares basically. Yeah, all the dark squares in the position are very weak. Uh, and also, you know, uh, B6 is a big weakness. As you rightly pointed out, C5. What about White's position? I'm just checking. Uh, right. White position, there's not any weaknesses, but um, uh, I can see future weaknesses if the uh, light square bishop gets exchanged. Yes. So yeah, that, that means that the light square bishop is actually not that... Bad. It's very important actually. If I lose this, knight simply jumps and jumps into f3. So in a way, potential weaknesses are the light squares uh, in, in white's camp. Like, you know, knight can jump to e5 and d3 directly over here at some point, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the reason why uh, I feel that... Uh, you need to understand the weaknesses and then you have you will be very careful okay i don't need to exchange this bishop like i won't take such a pawn even if he gives me like you just as an example i'm this may be a bad move but taking this yeah. pawn would be very very dangerous like takes takes queen takes and you already see like bishop h3 or bishop g4 and this is very weak. is yeah. yeah could be crushing yeah, yeah could, yeah, be, could yeah. be very bad so that's the reason why uh, you begin to realize that there are mutual weaknesses in the position and the the overriding factor here is the sixth point which is development because if you look white has beautiful development he just needs to get his rook into the game but even it's just one move ahead uh, one move away and you can just right, uh, yeah. black cannot easily develop himself you know this knight moves then i can jump in 
true and yeah the last yeah, point yeah. is initiative it's black to move if black can do something like let's say knight g4 uh then i play h3 then he goes something like knight e3 fe3 queen e3 something where he gets the initiative you can say okay he has it but here nothing much is happening like that yeah yeah and last point is king safety and i think uh, white's king is uh, a little bit under the cloud uh, here because of this pawn but nothing uh, too dangerous actually right yeah so when you evaluate a position like this with all these points what do you feel who's better i think white definitely white i mean uh, yeah yeah white just after the way you explained it yeah exactly once you start understanding once you try to delve deeper into the finer points you understand that white's position is really long term much better black has to do something now about this attack otherwise he is just having a uh, lot of weaknesses in his position right yeah so if we look at the game continuation he went b5 here i uh, exchanged my right. knight yes. and now you will see this pawn actually which looked quite strong is now attacked by guys yeah. and my threat is also bishop f6 bishop f6 and knight e4 right yeah by the way shout out to rakshit singh who says amazing initiative by sagar will help so many people for sure a true revolution of chess in india guru dakshina for today thank you so much rakshit very kind of you uh, no yeah sagar sir yeah i mean that is so true though like the way you just not in india but like everywhere the amount of uh the way you're helping chess it's it's just amazing it's like there's no words for it yeah thank you thank you and and you you are uh, coming every day that's just very nice to see uh, so <laughs> keep doing that uh, and just to finish this point if if you know my opponent realized here that he is under a lot of uh, pressure so he went knight g4 uh, i went h3 uh, and uh, finally knight e5 i took took and bishop e4 attacking the okay, rook yeah. this, and this, finally this, you know yeah. white is just clearly uh, just better better yeah 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 so Crushing. so you know try doing this for few of your games okay uh, like let's say the games in which you lost where you thought you couldn't couldn't analyze it or you couldn't understand during the game try these eight points which i just mentioned to you in those positions and then you write down these things and send them to me on on my email chessbaseindia@gmail.com and uh, uh uh no no sir definitely and also this is going to be very helpful for me because um uh, i tomorrow yeah tomorrow i'm playing this fee day standard tournament online okay uh, it's held on chess.com so i think yeah this is just going to be um amazing and very helpful good so so when you if you if you do use this and if you feel that uh, you could make use of this let us know uh, of this just try to revise this eight points a little bit look at your games how you could apply it because at start it will take time you know you may is it a long game or is it a blitz tournament uh, it's it's 1 uh, hour 30 minutes 9 oh, days so pretty good all good yeah so so try it out uh, and good luck to you thank you sir and i see a lot of magnets behind you uh, do you travel a lot uh no that's all my uh, dad's all dads uh, my dad travels a lot but yeah uh, generally even i i do travel for chess though but yeah yeah fantastic fantastic uh, good uh, and uh, give my greetings to your dad uh, i have met him and you in in mumbai uh, when you came to play yes, the yes yeah, many times actually and, and yeah, i must yeah. tell the viewers that uh, arya was writing a book uh, on on uh, artificial intelligence right Or uh yes sir, yeah artificial intelligence and chess it's actually going to be published in about 2 uh, to 3 weeks from now wow nice fantastic so when it happens just uh let us know i think lot of people in the uh, in the chess base india community would like to get it uh okay no, yes sir definitely definitely i'll let you know okay bye take care good luck for tomorrow i uh, thank thank you sir thanks a lot for this thank you bye Guys, Sagar sir, opening the chat. <laughs> Thanks, Arya. <laughs> no worries, bye, sir. Bye, Thank bye. you. Okay, so that was Arya. Uh, very nice uh, guy. Nice talking to him. I should uh, stop sharing my screen.
this is this is working well yeah this is working well i think we have the next guest but let me take a short breather let's see what's happening in the chat guys uh, is this format uh, interesting for you do you like it i believe a lot of people who will join in will will really be benefited i think what i taught aria was the imbalance technique uh, i'm just going to write down this uh, and by the way uh, all those who come once in the show will be given a tag of chess patient uh, to them and so i know that i have worked with them before and then i i will try to keep some kind of a note where there are all these things prescribed and so i know how it's going gopal ayer good morning sagar today's dr chess idea is revolutionary fantastic idea it's clearing so much of my weaknesses love you fantastic gopal i'm i'm so glad and you know different people will come with different weaknesses and some will uh, correspond with your uh, problems and that's nice to know and i'm i'm also thankful to all the people who are coming out and talking about it because many times it's not easy to talk about what you're not good at so let's get the next guy say to minocha uh, say to i think you need to unmute yourself hello hello say to hi can you hear me so can you hear me yes i can hear you can can you switch uh, on your camera for the viewers very nice very nice good to see you say too okay thank you sir tell me where are you from uh, how old are you and what do you do bangalore in you are from bangalore okay and how old are you i don't know somehow your voice is not very uh, smooth I'm 15 years. Okay, you're 15 years. Yeah, that's good. You can hold the mic that way. Uh, and how how strong are you? Rating. I'm one zero three six. Okay, okay. Well, Setu has been someone who's been following a lot of my lectures since uh, last couple of months. So finally, good to see you. Your your face, you know. I I I have. spoken to you on the chat i've spoken to you on the mail uh, so finally i can see you so tell me wh- what's what's your issue what what's what are you suffering from see my weakness is relation more of a position I can't visualize my okay i'm calculating i can't get many moves ahead Can can you keep the mic mic closer so I can hear? Yeah. yeah. So when I'm calculating, I can't visualize the position very well. Okay. So basically, my weakness is visualization. Your 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 weakness is uh, that you cannot visualize things so well. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Let's let's try to test it. Let's see. Uh. If we can. Is there any any particular game that you have in mind that of your own? or like that i remember now okay okay no no issues by the way guys if you have some specific games where you faced a problem then you can actually share that game and we can we can uh, look at that because you know it it can be very useful okay i'm going to uh, put up a position for you and uh, you know this is a position where i was white ah sorry let me share the screen first i forgot you can't see it uh, okay so uh, can you see the board see to see the board yeah you can see the board can, can you keep your mic closer to you because i can't hear you uh uh i can see the board very nice okay let me get your video also on the frame so that uh I, people can see you okay good so in this position i went rookie one okay 
uh, my opponent played h6, which was not a great move. I went e4, knight e4, knight e4, rook e4, uh, sorry, d4, rook e4. He played bishop f5. I went back. He went rook d8. Uh, and here I went uh, queen e2, a5, and I went knight to h4. Attacking the bishop, he went back. Okay. So, so your your task now is to is to think about this position, what's going on. Uh, yeah. And try to calculate. Uh, just a second. Uh, let me just one second. Uh, I can I can uh, share with you. Just give me a second. Let me put, yeah, this is good. Let's, let's try to test your problem here. Uh, and yeah, you can see the screen. Yes. Okay. So what would you play here as white? So the first move which I which came to my mind was rook into e6. Okay. Okay. Go on and so t talk out loud. Like let's imagine this is your game. You're going to play in this position. Your opponent is just made the move bishop at seven. Clock is ticking by. What will you do? Rook into e6. Okay. F e6. Queen e6. Uh, if he plays king f8, then I oh, first f8. So I'm not going to ta speak anything. You're going to talk out and you're going to make a move on the board as if it's your game. You have, let's say, roughly around two to three minutes on the clock or five minutes you think and you tell me like you think out loud so that I can hear you Rook e6 f e6 queen e6 king f8 and here I'm trying to find move One move I thought after king f8 is bishop to e4 because if he takes I go knight g. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, he just takes, yeah? Yeah. So would you would you just be like blank out on the board like you would not think sometimes just stare at the position or does that happen to you? Yeah, a lot. A lot, yeah. So so try to calculate like you. Uh, let's let's go on. Come back, come back into the moment. Don't uh, don't uh, go away. So we are going to make it slightly more interesting here. I'm going to make it, I'm going to give you three minutes on the clock like a game of chess and we are going to see you calculate, you know. So you need to make a move by when three minutes ends and you need to talk out. You need to speak out. Don't worry about whether you'll say something foolish or everyone will laugh or something. No need for that. Just think. We need to improve. That's the most important thing.
after queen into e6 king f8 i am thinking about the q qr bnp method what is qr queen rook like first queen if there's any check capture attack rook bishop it and on okay. basically i feel after king f8 is king is very weak and there ha- there should be some way to attack it mhm go on So, so your time is ticking by. You need to decide whether you want to sacrifice, you want to play something else, and you know this is exactly what would happen in a game to you, I guess. Uh, so when I don't find play some normal developing move like rook e one here. So you will play that, or you have still one minute. Do you want to think, or you want to make the move? No, I'll think. Okay, think. Yes, uh, Rakshit. If you can share PGNs with me for analysis, would be good. Would be good. In general, uh, if if anyone wants to come on air and share PGN file, that is fine. So this is uh, say to coming under tremendous time pressure now. Last thirty seconds, he has to make a move. and he is not yet decided what to do this is very common uh, that happens with all of us in chess uh, but you know that's the tragedy of chess or you can say the good part about chess you need to make a move you can't just uh, wait and wait forever say to you can see the clock yeah yeah okay so i haven't got anything so i'll just go with rook e1 okay So so as his time ends Setu says rook e1 okay i'll dismiss it and uh, let's let's think about this position a little bit deeper and try to understand how you thought you saw one attractive move and you were like okay this is what i'm going to do uh, and then you took like you took here you took here and then you took here and then after king f8 you are like oh i can't see what's happening here i don't see the mate i really want to mate him knight g6 but this bishop just doesn't go away i really want to play bishop e4 but after he plays bishop g8 i'll be the happiest person in the world but but he will take on the on e4 and i can't really checkmate him because of bishop takes back oops sorry bishop takes back on g6 and then you take back but nothing much is happening yet he'll just put his knight and maybe black is just winning so you're thinking all of this and your time is coming up and then finally you play the move rook e1 which you know frankly speaking is is a decent move but i can even attack your rook with bishop b4 you may have to move it again secondly i can just play knight f6 here and perhaps that is also all right for me um the way in which you should think and this is very important is that you need to look at candidate moves okay whenever you look at a position you should not begin with rook e6 f e6 queen e6 king f8 you should be looking at rook e6 looks like one possibility what are the other possibilities here what do you think can you come up with some more ideas like rook e1 as you thought okay developing a rook what else d5 d5 just to push the pawn maybe a good idea comes as a candidate move anything else in your mind maybe bishop h3 but not 
it's not really no it's okay jot it down bishop h3 looking at this weakness nice so now you have one move two moves three moves four moves okay so when you jot down things you know that okay in three minutes i have to look at four five moves not just one move while what you did was you just focused completely on this position and yes it's the most at kind of uh, exciting move it's drawing you into this position because after king f8 it looks like a mate but then if you can't find it you can be like okay this looks interesting but i can't find anything let me wait let me think about something else and then you go to the next move because rook e1 and bishop h3 look like normal moves which you can anyway make let's look at the more critical move d5 so now let's try to calculate this because clearly black cannot allow taking on uh, e6 so what would black do here so black has two options Very, i think i like this i, I like how you began black has two options not that you started calculating a move so always do this whenever you get a position look at the options very quickly okay so either cd or e5 e5 or cd okay e5 does it is it a good move e5 oh, if I... E5, don't you think it just loses a pawn like you take bc6 and bishop c6 yeah oh uh, yeah so so e5 is not possible let's look at uh, ed5 what do you play here or uh, in g4 Okay, let's let. It's one option. Yeah, it's one option. Queen g4 here, and. E d is one option. C d yes. And I think basically these two options only in this current Very position. Good. Yeah, this and I would also look at somehow bishop into g7. You know, in case if it because it's a capture, in case something is happening, and then I would look first at queen g4 because there's a mate in one here. How should black defend against it? Then go. Shab G six. No, but that would lose a pawn, right? I will just take this very yeah. important. Yeah. But say something simpler for black. Yeah. What would black do? G six. G six. G six. It just weakens everything a lot. Like for example, let's imagine that at some point my bishop at this diagonal. I want to play something that doesn't weaken. Also, it closes off my bishop. So this is not a good move. Oh, okay, yeah. If I, oh. F six is simple. F six looks very weak, very weak. Like in general, yeah. uh, I can even think I'll of weakening. very weak weakening. I can go rookie six uh, here. I can go knight f5. Then you take. I take with the queen. All the light squares are weak. It just looks very, very bad. So what's the simplest way? Say to come on, focus. I think you. One of the things you need to do is like put a lot of water on your face and like be alert. And I'm just a bit nervous because no, I'm on a live stream. Don't be nervous. Come on. Everyone's learning from you. A lot of people have this problem. Uh, and thanks to you, thanks to you coming on air and sharing this, a lot of people are getting to learn something new. So you you should be proud of yourself. G five. Sorry. G five. Yeah, G five. Again, I I feel this is a bit weakening because I can first of all play knight f five when you may have to give up your bishop. Secondly, also because this pawn is pinned, I could think of playing like f4, sure. but 
you know you have a uh. fi idea so maybe i'll go knight f5 and just get a good good advantage here well generally this is weak jot down the candidates how to defend it come on you have you said to me g6 you said to me g5 you said f6 there's one move which you missed out which is the best bishop e5 okay bishop e5 yes that's doesn't doesn't it look like a very standard move like you know yeah. just no weaknesses nothing everything looks good i would also say you can think about the move bishop f8 you know just defending everything no issues but i think your move bishop e5 makes more sense because it exchanges a very powerful bishop yes maybe white can sacrifice an exchange here hoping for some thing but i don't think it exists the knight is safe you can always play rook e8 and defend it also it attacks the queen right now so there we have it you know the the one of the main issues that you are uh, facing i feel is that you are not jotting down the candidate moves quickly and i've uh, said this it's like you know you are like a soldier okay uh, in a war and when you are entering an opponent's territory how will you go like you're moving let's imagine with a gun you're going ahead but at every few seconds you will look to your right you look to your left because someone can attack you from any end so same way in chess you go forward you look to your right you look to your left you look at all the possibilities and you're like okay this looks interesting i can't go here because this is dangerous let me look at cd5 which is my other candidate move what are now black's options black can maybe take on d5 black can play c5 you know you you start jotting down these things very quickly and don't be slow okay a uh, one more question to you is do you uh, uh okay i'll come to it later but what about first cd5 what if he takes here because now my idea is clear i want to if you take i want to play e5 and block everything so what do you do here maybe we could go queen to g6 queen g4 But you mean can play or not f queen g4 sorry queen to four yeah now queen g4 but then uh, do you think still bishop f8 or bishop e5 the same idea could work yeah maybe it's it's interesting like uh, i could go bishop e5 again somehow I want to exchange these two off and that is to my advantage as black because this was a powerful bishop. Jot down the candidates, can you? So one was queen to g4. Okay. D5 is not not one because of e5. Yeah. Checks captures threats, look at some more possibilities. and is rook into e6 okay does it work now your move rook e6 one of the possibilities anything else on your mind shop g7 but doesn't work yeah takes uh, just king takes maybe doesn't look great L let's think about your move rook e6 what happens now calculate it so rook into e6 f e6 in e6 yeah if he plays king h8 a good thing is that our bishop from b2 is as the diagonal yeah oh so, maybe 
queen f7 queen f7 what is the problem with queen f7 how will he defend mate here to g rook g8 one possible move anything else to defend that if he goes rook g8 i capture on d7 yeah so instead of rook g8 what is the better move I to f6 or I bishop e5. Bishop e5, exactly. Like rook e6, uh, f e6, queen e6, king h8, and you can now, uh, uh, if you go queen f7, I can just go bishop e5. And there's no attack. So, again, look at some possibilities, more possibilities here. Is there anything else? So here I was seeing bishop into g7. Yeah, king into g7. Bishop into e e5. Bishop into d5. Threatening queen f7. Yeah. See, this is the tough part now. You are you have sacrificed a piece and a rook, and you are threatening queen f7. Uh, but it may not end up in a mate because. Well, it's it's dangerous, yeah. but you can't visualize everything accurately. Uh, let's say after bishop d5, yeah. this is a threat. How do I defend it? Can I can I play? Uh, I'm thinking of knight f8. Then you go queen f queen f7 check. I go king h8. And somehow my knight defends g6, where your knight wants to enter. After king h8, maybe I go queen f6. Aha! Queen f6 is a mate. No? Mm. Fantastic, yep. fantastic. Ah. So bishop g7, queen, king g7, bishop d5. You want to checkmate me? And if I play knight f8, which I thought was good. The, it loses to this pretty mate. Very good, Setu. Um, but instead of knight f8, any defense here because you're too much, too many pieces down, like two pieces and a rook. So I'm thinking if I can defend. I was considering maybe just rook f8. Oh. So that if you, you take know. and I go back, now you are a rook down, you have to prove your compensation. Perhaps not enough. Mm. But you have a very powerful move here. Can you think of it? Yeah. What is it? Oh, I was thinking. Rook one. Rook? I was one candidate. Rook e one was one candidate. Yeah. Okay, look at first checks, captures, and threats. First is check. You saw bishop g7. Uh, Any other checks? Knight g6, but. Yeah, he oh. just takes queen g6. So, those are the only two good checks. Captures? Captures one is bishop d5. Yeah. Anything else? Mm, I don't think. Come on, look. Look, say two. Oh, yeah. Queen at six. Queen at six. The pawn is pinned. So this bishop is attacking here. So queen into h6. And now it's a mate here. How does he defend? He goes G8. Is this a good move? But knight G6. Knight G6. Beautiful mate. mate. Yes, yeah, smothered mate. So what does he do instead of this? Goes Bishop E5 maybe. Yeah, Bishop E5. Now what do you? How do you finish him off? I I'll play. 
move bishop d5 i'm threatening knight g6 mate how about making it forced make it forced why do you want to oh so oh, first i'll go knight g6 yeah. king g8 yeah. bishop d5 yeah. and a mate it's a mate so so the basic idea is that in this position after rook e6 fe6 he can't go uh king h8, h8. where does he go now King F8. What do you do now? Is it, has it changed in any way the position from what you were looking at before D5? Yeah, the bishop is free. What will you play now? One tempo. We have one tempo head because the bishop is free now. This one, yeah. This B2 bishop. Anything else that you see is in your favor? Here I was thinking bishop D5. Yeah. Killing move, yeah. Yeah. What to do? How to stop this mate? Bishop, Bishop G8? Bishop but G8. you know already yeah. why that's bad. At G6. Yeah, it's a checkmate. So, in this way, what you did is basically you looked at candidate moves and you figured out, okay, rookie 6 is a good idea. But it's not working because my pieces are not coming into the game. So let me first open it up. And you know, this is how imagination also works. Visualization also works. I think the main problem that you're facing is an inability to jot down moves very quickly, which is like what's happening here. So if you can make this a habit, whenever given a position, what are the possible moves? Don't go into one. Like, don't think about, I know it's very tempting. And sometimes when it works, you are the happiest person in the world because you get it the fastest. But when it doesn't work, you feel really upset. So it's good to always look at candidates. You know, when I'm given a position like this, I will think of rook e6, d5, rook d1, bishop h3 very quickly. And then I'll be like, no, rook d1, bishop h3 should be my last options if nothing works. I should look at rook, rook e6, f6, queen e6, king f8. Is anything working here? Okay, let me think. Bishop e4, bishop h3, knight g6 check. No. d5 maybe. And then I'll be like, oh, what about d5 first? So that if he takes, now take, take, take would mean that I'll get the e6 pawn, uh, this d5 pawn. And if he takes ed over here, then I can take cd. And basically my bishop is already opened up. I'm very happy in this position. So all in all, uh, say too, it's very important for you to become more active. Can, can you tell me, uh, do you do you indulge in any sports? Do you do any sport? Uh, I play badminton yeah. and I play table tennis. Okay. And, and do you do it regularly? I play table tennis every day. I can't play badminton now because of this. But I, then I play table tennis every day. Okay, good. I feel that you should uh, do some more sporting activities so that I don't know, uh, maybe you are just nervous here, but I somehow feel that you can be more sort of active, like you, sh you can be more quick about things. And many times when you are doing more physical activity, like playing badminton, playing table tennis, and then you are playing chess, you, you are able to think much faster. Okay. Sir, I had one last doubt. Yeah. Uh, so, when do we realize when we have to do calculation I, and not a positional move? I think you have to calculate every move. That is the usual thing. It's not like you can say, ah, here I'll stop calculating. Many times you're calculating, you're calculating and you're like, okay, here my calculations are just not working. And now I need to improve my position. So I need to get one more piece into the attack. It's never like people say, okay, this is my switch of calculation. I switch it on and now I'll switch it off. And now I'll think positionally that never happens, you know, in chess. So you need to calculate. And my, my recommendation to you is, um, get any, uh, positions like a book of any positions and just take a position like randomly, for example, any position i i would say uh, open i don't know if you have chess base and mega database uh, but if you have then just open any like this one i open any random game and i load any position and i'll say what are the candidate moves for white here okay 
so i'll think about it i'll see knight into e6 is one uh, sorry knight into e6 is one move uh, knight b5 is another move can i do something else can i go knight f3 knight c2 i'll look at all the candidates and then i'll think which one is better okay if i play knight b5 he will play rook d1 rook d1 bishop e5 uh, knight c7 is impossible because bishop is controlling so i don't want to go knight b5 ah there's also knight c6 attacks the rook but after rook takes rook takes perhaps my knight is well placed slightly misplaced i don't know let me think knight c6 is definitely an option but what about knight into e6 f e6 mm, i like this position but my e5 pawn can become a weakness and you know i'm, I'm thinking about all the different possibilities here before going into one line uh, sorry i i did i share my screen with you you haven't but i can see on the youtube ah, I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry uh, so <laughs> uh, you should you should have told me uh, that, that way um, yeah so so i was i was talking about this position basically that where should i put my knight knight c6 knight b5 knight e6 knight b3 you know all these possibilities so just load up a random position and you will see in the game he took he took and he played bishop d3 uh, so so think of any take any position of any good game load a random position and say okay now what are the candidate moves in this position black is attacking my bishop i can take but my queen is hanging can i do something else okay b5 looks like an option but hey, is there something happening on the king side? No. Okay, so only move here is b5 and then you find it. So I want you to do this. Will you do it? Uh, and, oh, I have woodpecker method. Can I do the same thing? Yes, in that? fantastic. Good. Try doing it. Take any position. Don't rush for the answer. The problem what people many times do is that they want to get the answer. So they will rush to get the move but i think very important is to fix your thinking which is look at candidate moves okay look at options okay say to i will i'll wish you good luck for for your uh, preparation and uh, i'm i'm going to write down i have recommended you the medicine of candidate moves yeah in the chess doctor so let's see if you you follow it do the woodpecker method do the entire book slowly and steadily but rather than trying to solve everything go, improve your process of thinking okay be become stronger each day okay you, welcome it was very nice meeting you and and take care and uh, stay safe in this this covid 19 uh, situation where you can't go out make sure that you improve your calculation okay bye yes sir Thanks a lot. Welcome. By the way, I want to thank Setu for coming here and everyone who's here. Uh, Setu, you can you can go outside the room so that next person can come in. Uh, I would also like to thank. I just wanted to say. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that I love your analogies. <laughs> okay, the soldier one. Yeah, this time we discussed. So keep that in mind. Think of yourself as a soldier. So you can't be like relaxed sitting at home sipping on a juice and thinking about a position you need to be like focused when you are working on chess okay thanks bye bye arya shah uh, thank you so much he said his first super chat the help given by sagar sir is enormous thank you so much arya that was very very nice of you to uh, do this okay next one we have ajinkya atle Ajinkya, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, very well. Ajinkya, can you switch on your camera? Yeah, sorry. Fantastic. Ajinkya, where uh, are you from? One second. Yeah. yeah. Hi. 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 Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Pune. Pune. Yep. Nice. Nice. I, uh, my wife is from Pune, Amruta. Oh. Yeah. Oh, which area? She is from Varje. 
Ah, okay. That's a little far away from where I stay. Uh, and tell us a bit about your chess. Like, uh, how strong are you? How old are you, first of all? And what's your chess like? Do you were you playing chess before the lockdown? You started during the lockdown. How is it? So I've been playing chess for I think two years now. Uh, I am approximately sixteen, sixty on Lee Chess, I think. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so like I've been playing chess for a very long time. Got hooked onto it. and i've uh, been following you for a very long time as well i got uh, really into chess space videos uh, i think in the past 4 5 months Fantastic. let's say and i'm 26 you're 26 okay and uh, so yeah. so you are around 16 60 but you never played rating tournament so you don't have a fide rating no 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 so no 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 fide chess rating. you like very much uh, what what's your job like are you working somewhere Yes, I am. Uh, I am a computer. Uh, like I've done computer engineering, so I'm doing uh, software. Nice, nice. Uh, so, so tell us uh, what what is uh, your problem in chess? What's the illness that you suffer in chess? If we can try and solve it. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, so I think mostly um, what all amateur players face the middle game. Ah, uh, so finding a plan, you know, and. Uh, even if i do find a plan so typically like what i've learned from a lot of your videos is to you know go for the weakness find the weaknesses yeah. after development yeah. and um so typically when there are no weaknesses when the opponent is around the same or like better than i am so you like it's difficult to spot weaknesses and then uh, i try the method uh, you stated uh, in one of your comedians videos and even just now uh, the eight uh, points yeah. regarding the imbalances so i think that's a uh, i mean it i know it's the right way to you know go forward yes. but uh, like i don't i still don't see the moves you know like very concretely like okay fine my bishop is bad but their bishop is bad maybe that can work may not work but how do i actually know what move to make so something like that you know yeah. so these things do, are do little uh, maybe do you have any game of yours where you face this problem a uh, very similar uh, issue Uh yeah sure I can look it up uh, can you give me yeah, two minutes Yeah sure if you can send me a game uh, I would love that meanwhile uh, I would like to thank yeah, sure. Keith Mascarenas who says great initiative Sagar love the idea fantastic uh, I think I can also pull up a position which I was thinking Okay So I'm thinking of sending you a game which I lost. I think that would be more instructive for me, okay. so you can point out my. Uh, okay, I think I think this is a good one. Yeah, it's difficult to know exactly your weakness from one game, but we'll try and we'll at least try no, to sure, understand sure. what's going wrong, and then we can, you know, you can think about it and you can say, okay, but that is a mistake sure, which sure, I sure. did only in this game, or it keeps happening every time. Sure, sure. So I have sent you a link, I think, uh, on Leeches or a Leeches link. It's one of my games. Okay, let's see if I can. Does that work? Yes, yes. Let me. Uh, open it up okay yes let's see i need to download this so that i can open it in uh, yeah oops sorry just uh, let's save it here and let me open it up let's uh, i'll share my screen with you so you can have a look at it yeah Where is so many people? Yeah, who messaged me? Uh, I, I need to share. So, uh, Discord is is new for me, uh, but I I am figuring. Yeah, out, figuring it out. Oh oh, it's very new for me as well. Ah, uh, so in case uh, I don't know you, you might have seen I might have actually logged in before as well, uh -huh. but I couldn't figure out how to unmute myself, and then uh, I think. I Oops, sorry. I I just m made a mistake. Ajinkya, can you call back? Ah, uh, this is what I make a mistake. Yeah, Ajinkya, are you there? Ah, uh, sorry, Ajinkya, sorry. I just made a mistake. Yeah. I went out and yeah, yeah, no. uh, <laughs> yeah. I got a little bit. I thought I messed up. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, Sumed uh, is here. I'll I'll just Sumed. You can come after this. How do I disconnect? Yeah. Okay, so I'll share my. Ha, can you see my screen? I cannot. One second. Let me. Go live. Okay. Uh, Gopal Ayer yeah. says, if Sagar is Dr. Chess, then Abish is coronavirus. Please treat him. <laughs> well, uh, Gopal, I think uh, very important is in this to have the inclination to, to improve. And I don't think Abish needs to improve at chess. Um, so, okay, let's pull up this one. So you can see my, my screen here, the game. It, uh, I'm still unable to see it, sir. Okay, one second. Ah. It's dark, completely blacked out. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe there's some issue with uh, live. It was working okay until now. Um, Streaming no. channel. I mean, I'm trying to see it on Discord, I think. Um, it says Chessbase India has minimized the window set tight. One second. Stream pause. Swap to your game to resume. Okay. I do not know what's happening. Maybe Nikhil can help me. Uh, let me go back into the room and let me try sharing it once again. If I cannot share with you then maybe i'll just analyze it and you can watch it in the video later that could be an option okay sure sure uh, but but ideally i would love to have your views at that moment you know or you can open it yep. on your end also and and when when i say move number xyz you can say so okay okay i can try that but right now you oh. you can't see anything yeah no, I cannot. Um, can I check it out on the YouTube? Oh, but there'll be a lag. Right? So let me let me stop that for now and let me just. Uh... So you are uh, playing which game was it? Uh, let me see. Can I share my screen instead? Uh, will that work? No, let's let's look at it this way. So this is your game okay. against. Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll get you on the screen. Uh, yeah. Stop streaming. So that's another one of my friends, actually. You, you uh, are, are you there? Yes, thank I'm you, there. Thank you for waiting. I think it was my internet which of went off. Uh, and yes. Okay, so so you are black. Yes, apocalypta, calyptic. Yes, that's correct. Apocalyptic. Okay, so C4. Yeah. E C5. Yeah. Knight C3. G6. E4. B G7. Knight f3, e6, and d4. Okay, so first of all, uh, tell me why did you play e6 here? Uh, I wanted to get my knight out uh, to uh, e7 yeah. because I did not want to block my dark squared bishop. I thought that's a general setup whenever you're queen getting a bishop, right? Yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to make space for my knight. And uh, also I was uh, preparing d5 at some point. Yeah, you want to play d5? Yeah. Well, but the problem so, here is that, you know, in general, uh, if I have to show you some some opening, like for example, you play the dragon, then you mm -hmm. never really put your pawn on e6. You will always put it on d6, okay. right? Uh, the main reason yes. being that white has already opened up the position with d4. In your game, e6 makes sense if white is unable to play d4 but the moment he played d4 uh -huh. and after cd knight d you will see that your d6 e7 all these c7 light squares become very weak because your yeah. bishop is on g7 which should actually have been on e7 oh so, so okay. instead of e6 what would be the right way yeah. to begin according to you mm. Maybe queen c7? Uh, but why do you want to play queen c7? Like I can attack your queen with knight d5 at some point. How about developing? Mm, all right. Yes. Oh, okay. 
Uh, yes, why not? This knight is anyway coming yeah. here. Next move, let's say he goes, say now he can't play d4. If he goes bishop e2, now you go e6. And you play or put uh -huh. your knight on e7. Uh, so I think your opponent took very good advantage of your move e6. And uh, he, he okay. took knight d4. And now your dark squares are weak. You played any 7 uh, Bishop e3, knight c6. And uh, taking uh, on c6 wasn't the best ideas. I mean, he could he could go knight b5. Uh, looking at yeah. the d6 square, I think that would have been pretty strong. Okay. Knight into c6, you yeah. took bt, b, b takes c6, that's fine. Bishop d4. And now let's let's uh, look at this position again. Like, what should you play yeah. here? Uh, so I really did not want my dark squared bishop to be exchanged off. Uh, but I really did not see a method. I mean, I saw one way was f6 or maybe even uh, e6 or uh, e5, sorry. Yeah. But um, e5 just blocked my bishop, I thought. And uh, I did not like that either. And also, it uh, I don't know, I thought if I wanted to ever play uh, d5, uh, playing e5 would not, I mean, it would stop me playing from playing uh, d5. So I, I ruled out e5 for that reason. And uh, f6 just looked bad for me. I did not know what my bishop was doing after that on that square. It just seemed misplaced. So I just castled. I thought, uh, like, if he exchanges it, it just gets exchanged. At least I developed. Okay, I, I like what you're thinking, but I really want to share my screen this time. Uh, if if you can, because I have some very interesting example here. Uh, okay. You can, you cannot see, yeah, like. Uh, 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 let me try. <laughs> Still says the same thing, stream yeah, paused. Stream paused and I have no idea why, but I'll, I'll figure it out uh, later. So the thing is, okay. uh, here it's all a question of priorities uh, in this position. Like yeah. you said, d5 okay. you want to play, but the point is, yeah. if you exchange your dark squared bishop, your dark squares start to become very weak on d6 yes. and f6 and so on. So I would, without any even doubt, play the move e5 here. Uh, just stopping the exchange of the bishops and yes he has a good move here bishop c5 i think it's it's the best move uh trying to uh sorry not d uh trying to latch on to the d6 square but you know okay. you can play castles and you can you can okay. hope to unravel at some point let's say rook e8 put, move off your bishop from c8 to say a6 and so on uh and play that position okay. but you know what what you did was when you castled and you allowed him to take uh, and give a mm -hmm. check it it kind of weakened your dark squares very much yes yeah, but but i, I think your opponent uh, allowed you uh, after queen d4 king g8 to play uh, bishop he played bishop e2 uh, here what, what yeah. would be a better move for white uh, over there i uh I think stopping d5 would have been a good oh. idea because I was able to get uh, queenside castles or rook d8, I mean rook d1. Is possible. Um, Any other move that comes to your mind? Uh, maybe c5? Yes, I like the move c5 very much. Somehow just clamping your structure, uh, very mm -hmm. difficult to make progress here with uh, yeah, yeah. black. Although I, I think rook b8 could be possible and and you have some play but your bishop on c8 is very sad you know like it just can't do yeah. much so i like your move d5 which is like fighting back uh, in the position for more space uh, he long castle but it really doesn't matter even if you lose the pawn on d5 because it's very important for mm. you to now start getting some play against his king so in yeah okay so let, uh, here you i think uh, played Queen b6. Yes. And what is your logic behind this move? I wanted to trade off the. I saw that I can't defend d5 anymore. Um, so I thought I would like to trade the queens off and uh, get an attack against uh, maybe b2 at some point after uh, rook d8. So I was mostly just. Uh, I wanted to trade the queens off and I just wanted to simplify because I was uh, suffocating on the queen side over there a little bit. So did you calculate like queen b6 if he takes on d5 anyway 
aren't you losing a pawn yes i was losing a pawn there that's correct so i i was prepared to go down a pawn here i did not know a better okay, move okay think about from, it from this way. way like for example uh you are going to lose yeah. a pawn when you lose yes. a pawn do you want to exchange pieces or you want to keep pieces on the board definitely keep pieces so so the first thing is you don't want to exchange the queens because you are losing a pawn but queen b6 is just like saying yes i will lose a pawn but i will also not have a queen to attack you so you can just relax play the end game with a pawn up i i am ready to just grovel which is not a good idea uh, to do so think on these lines mm -hmm. and come up with something more aggressive for yourself okay um rook b8 yeah let's let's do like say to uh, i don't know if you were listening to the previous one yeah yeah i was i was let's look at yes, the I candidate was. moves what are the possibilities okay. for you right so uh, rook b8 is definitely okay. one um bishop h6 does come bishop to mind bishop h6 okay uh yeah um yeah the one's being queen a5 yes. i think and uh yeah i don't think others make a lot of sense after that uh, there is um, c5 but that just drops a pawn i don't see how that yeah. works um maybe launch the a pawn a5 a bit too slow because you lose yeah, the uh, center and uh, you play yeah exactly um so i think my candidate moves would be rook b8 bishop a6 and um queen a5 uh, yeah and queen a5 one of these uh, i think uh, funnily all three moves are better than what you played in the game uh, <laughs> because <laughs> all of them have the same idea of being active and looking at a king and mm -hmm. here i would say even bishop b7 should be a candidate move because you are defending d5 i know the bishop defending. is very passive but okay mm -hmm. it's a candidate move you can think about okay. it okay for me it okay. just feels natural to okay rook b8 i feel is good but then a7 i'm a bit worried although i i don't feel like if he takes queen into a7 here it's a great idea for him because his king gets opened up mm -hmm. further which is good for you uh, like you can play bd7 mm -hmm. and then rook a8 queen a5 other rook to b8 uh, could come like a very quick attack uh yeah and queen a5 i like this move very much like queen a5 is is interesting you are looking at his structure and at any point when he takes on d5 over there look at like for example i'm just giving an example queen a5 cd cd mm -hmm. ed let's take uh, ed yeah. he plays knight d5 uh, you you can yeah. h2 hangs first of all a2 but your e7 hangs with a checkmate so you have to be careful there uh, oh. but but what we can we can actually do here is find a way like knight into d5 queen into d5 and uh, i i i want to not exchange the queens here because his king is almost mated you know like if i get bishop f5 and rook c8 you are your king is just mated but you have to somehow make this work like queen c7 yeah. check uh, then he goes back uh, king b1 then you have bishop e6 which is very nice for you but queen c7 check he will play queen c4 somehow uh, and and that doesn't seem to work so i might go back here because i know that this is working yeah. out well and to cd like the first move queen a5 cd i might think about taking with the e pawn here ed5 the okay. reason being that after ed5 i can put my bishop let's say on f5 already uh, and start putting my rook b8 the other rook can come to c8 you, you see how i'm ready to sacrifice material in order to get the initiative in this position yeah um okay i can see why queen b6 was bad now you have and in fact bishop a6 is the best i mean the first move that the uh, instead of uh, queen a5 or rook b8 bishop a6 yeah. the idea being if you take ed i take cd you take cd then i take no. first on e2 knight e2 and just knight d5 and i think black has just very nice position here uh, knight centralized rook c8 coming queen a5 coming uh, and and in every possible way it is working out well for you uh, okay. so so let's stop okay. at 
castles long castle on mu 13 and try to try to understand where you are you are going wrong is that you feel that there is a yes. problem d5 is hanging and you rush yeah. into like okay i'm just worried my queen let me exchange the queens and which is like an emotional decision more than a kind of a calculated decision mm. and whenever you make an yeah. emotional decision in chess uh, many times it's wrong so try to calm down yourself and look at uh, the the things which are going on and i, I think you uh, basically what i liked about you is you're strong enough to find the good candidate moves so your only problem is that you're not looking for it if you think about it you can find yeah. it okay so i think that's uh, another problem i think i'm facing you know i don't understand what are the critical positions very easily where i should just take a breather and think about the position you know at length and uh, again like basically find the plan so i think this was one of those positions and i just completely overlooked that like during the game i didn't realize okay maybe you know i am i might be losing the edge here i should stop and think about candidate moves that are that will at least help me get active play uh, uh, so for me queen a6 was just as you said very rightly said queen d6 was just uh, an emotional decision oh i'm losing let's simplify let's make it easier for myself something like that and this happens at the highest level you know like people have been under stress throughout the game pressure and then they get a chance yeah. but because of something going on before like they were in a tough position they just make an emotional decision and they lose many times so it's not a problem just with lower level and uh, when you talk about critical moments when to pause and think i think uh, mm -hmm. one of my trainers told me that an entire lifetime is spent in understanding when is the critical moment in chess because because if wow. you can understand that you are basically a very strong player uh, and if you give wow. anand any game he will quickly run through it and tell you exactly okay this is the moment where i would have thought and that's only because of his experience he's playing a lot of chess and so on um but uh, that being said there are certain rules that you can apply like whenever you feel that you are coming under pressure like here you need to slow down a bit like you couldn't come up with an answer so you need to slow down look think about the rules okay opposite side castling can i attack his king can i keep pieces on the board and one more rule i don't know if this works every time but when the position is kind of all the pieces are in play of yours and you have kind of mobilized them then it is a critical okay. moment because then you you've already developed everything you need to start thinking of what to do with them so i i many times have developed finished development and then i take my time because that's where i really need to think of a direction and not just go with the momentum like you know inertia like i need to do something and so on by the way i think uh, if you are if you are uh, you know friend is uh, you may meet him at some point you can tell him that around move number 11 after he you played king g8 i think bishop e2 yeah. is somehow very um, mild move you know like why don't why don't you have a you have a queen there and and as we discussed c5 was good but why not h4 you know like hurling down at your king h4 h5 and you may you might start uh, getting a very dangerous attack on the on the king it's it's a possibly i don't yes. say it's a winning move or something but uh, sometimes we just develop for the sake of development which we shouldn't mm -hmm. okay oh yeah h4 i think h4 was definitely one of the suggested moves in the analysis that's uh, done later on uh, the computer was suggesting h4 to be probably the strongest well i i just see point. the dark square i see the queen on d4 looking at h8 and i see my rook on h1 and i feel h4 should come yeah. and if you play h5 yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. not going to be shy i will play g4 and sack another pawn and uh, open it up so uh, generally i would say um, the best way for you to improve at chess is to play and analyze those positions well what i'm seeing right now is many people they play and then they say okay lead chess analysis uh, and whatever they give they go through it but rather than that think about certain okay i felt uncomfortable when i my opponent after d5 uh, on move number th 13 what should i do think on your own and then check the engine evaluation and then you will improve your thinking thought process there 
right 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 okay fantastic i'm i'm actually okay. what i uh, realized by interacting with you is that uh, when you yeah. suggested three candidate moves back to back and all of them pretty good that you you are pretty strong and in in general if someone can jot down candidate moves quickly it means that they have a yeah. good chess understanding uh, which is true for you so so make use of that that's the, one of the best things i've heard this lockdown <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i'm looking forward i think 1678 uh, is your rating in this game maybe it's around 1600 yes. hopefully you can push it up a bit yeah. around 1800 should be your next aim yes definitely okay thank you thank you ajinkya and uh, okay. see you see you some day and uh, hopefully you you continue playing chess even beyond the lockdown yeah of course of course not not going to stop Great. thank you Thank you so much Sagar. My pleasure. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, fantastic. I think we have time for one last call uh today. Uh we need to But okay, I needed to thank someone Viraj Pandit said just defeated an IM right now. Big thanks to you. Well, Viraj, congratulations. Very happy to see. Okay let's see next one last one for the day who is he kaustub sharma kaustub can you hear me kaustub i guess you can hear me but i can't hear you maybe you need to go into settings and fix your microphone okay let's look at someone else who is there chirag khakkar I can take Sumed also. Okay. Let's look at someone who is there. Chirag. Chirag, you need to uh, mute your YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chirag, can you switch Hello? on your camera? Is it possible? Oh, this is. Hello. Hi. Yeah, can you? I can see you but I can see you multiple colors but okay that's that's not uh, bad I mean it looks interesting <laughs> Okay so hi Chirag how are you Hi Sagar I'm good I'm good I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel Thank you <laughs> And where are you from Uh I'm from Nagpur Nagpur oh fantastic Yeah and and uh, tell us about your chess like how how long how strong yeah. are you when are you playing since Uh yeah so I used to play a lot of chess in my school so I used to be like my school's team captain mm-hmm. so like I used to play CBSC tournaments so during the tournaments I used to defeat like 1600 1800 players but uh, like unfortunately I played a lot of less open feeder tournaments so ultimately I managed to play few of them in the end and I got a rating of 1482 but I don't know whether uh, it's like It's relevant till now or not? Like it, I, it showed an inactivity flag later. This was like eight years before I had an 1482 rating, so I'm not okay, sure. Okay, let's see. Uh, your name is Chirag Khakkar, right? Yes. I will check on FIDE. And basically, you know, even if you, oh, I don't know why is this. I need to go and make Google. search engines it still shows 1482 on friday i have checked yeah exactly so so basically you have a rating and it's active i mean you were flagged as inactive but the moment you play it will become active okay so i'm also inactive right now because my last rated game was 2 years ago uh so right. uh, you can't find my name in the list uh, like of the top players of india but if i start playing oh. it will be there again okay i plan to start playing again but like let's see. uh when was the last tournament you played you said uh is like 8 years ago oh, i think so 2000 okay 2012 i think so that was during my school years and i think in general nagpur has a good good um, chess culture so you may you may find a lot of tournaments there yes 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 i also participated in the simultaneous with abhijit kunte 
GM Abhijit Konte when he was here, and I was like the only unrated to be selected among the top five winners during that you beat time. Him, huh? So, no, 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 I didn't beat him. None of them, like hundred and five players played. None of them beat beat him. It was simultaneous, but like uh, they gave prizes for the best games of like top five people who were like had a best game against him. So. i was one of them during that time so. nice nice that's that's very nice uh, and uh, do you do you work on chess regularly now or is it what do you do uh so i've graduated in mass media advertising i was working in mumbai mm. but uh, like i gave up my job and i was preparing for my mba in nagpur but then i didn't uh, didn't score enough to have the college which i wanted so i was planning back to come for a job in mumbai but due to the lockdown and everything now i am like pretty much doing nothing during the lockdown so it was it was a critical period for you like you were deciding whether to do mba or job and so on and suddenly all of a sudden it's like lockdown and now chess <laughs> yes so lo- chess has been like the rescue for the lockdown i've been playing chess following all your streams with some app this or ever like it's and everything so. Yeah. tremendous tremendous uh i i am glad that you are playing uh, and if you if you have any chess uh, related issues that that you can uh, would like to get resolved you can ask me um, but it was very nice to see you i have never never met you in any tournament and to know that you are active you are you have a rating it means it's nice to know uh, it is like i played only uh, two open tournaments i think so and i like got the rating in my second one so because like i drew with one of 1500 and one with 1600 something like that so and otherwise i was active in chess for my school tournaments itself and mostly local tournaments okay. i never traveled outside of nagpur for any of the tournaments or something good like yeah. okay so is there something i can help you with uh yeah so i usually uh, play a uh, french defense with black so i just uh wanted to know how to go ahead with french defense advanced variation not the exchange variation so how to go ahead with uh, like a more attacking style with the french defense okay uh are you able to see my screen uh yes can you see the chessboard yes yes i can let me pull up a board um so you want to you want to know from black yes yes from black okay so let's look at it this way um i will put you on uh, the screen one second so that people can see you as well you can see yourself yeah you look weird uh, with all these colors yeah i actually on balcony door is open so i think no, so no no but in general like <laughs> so many colors green and all of that uh, okay so doesn't yeah. matter e4 uh, e6 d4 d5 and now uh, after e5 you go c5 c3 yeah i think this is the move that you will face most often and here the main move is knight c6 but there's also another way to play you can explore that which is queen b6 and it's not so silly because let's say he goes knight f3 you want to play bishop d7 and your idea is like you want to quickly play your bishop to b5 exchange these bishops and then you will be left with you know the good pieces on the board sort of uh, it comes with its own drawbacks because you are going moving a piece three times like two times in the opening so you are falling behind in development so the main line often goes bishop e2 bishop b5 and c4 like white is trying to gain some initiative because black has wasted time but it's a it's a viable line like i i remember that uh, my wife who plays the advanced french all the time faced some problems while preparing against this you see there are around 500 odd games which have already been played here Uh, so you can you can one thing you can explore is this but you can also go like normally knight c6 knight f3 and now uh, queen b6 yeah i played this queen knight c6 queen. and there are two main moves actually three one is a3 another one is bishop e2 and the third one is bishop d3 here 
I yeah. think Bishop D3 is uh, perhaps the most uh, scary because it's a gambit. But if you prepare against it, it's the yeah. easiest to face because uh, you go CD. Uh, I think CD okay. or just first Bishop D7 is also okay. Uh, I think this is better. Uh, and then uh, castles. Uh, CD, CD, Knight D4, Knight D4, Queen D4 and Knight C3. This is in the Milner Barry Gambit actually. Uh, and I think if I'm not mistaken, A6 is a very strong move here. Just look at this. Look at some games in this move. Uh, okay. And you will see that black scores beautifully. Like 39% for white is very bad. 40% for white. is All these scores are not good. Which means that it looks scary at first. But once you look at it carefully, you won't have any issues in this. Okay. The other win is that if he doesn't go bishop d3, he plays bishop e2. Uh, here, uh, there are there are several ways to play. I think the one which uh, maybe you can follow this Indian IM. His name is Ratnakaran, uh, and and he has he has good knowledge in this. Also, Emmanuel Berg is very very strong. Uh, so what I do is usually in chess base, uh, I will open up this position and look at players who have played this opening many times and i think uh, emmanuel berg is one guy who's written a book so you see there are already four games of him uh, i can load up one of the games and you see that he uh, played cd cd knight h6 knight f5 uh, and and he won a pawn i don't know why uh, rahul just uh, gave up a pawn there but Knight h6, cd, cd, knight h6 looks like an interesting way to continue there. Mm. I also go knight e7 and knight f5 in this yeah, line. Yeah, that is, uh, I think, a good way to the... play. Although I remember that uh, Ratnakaran, I'm just trying to find, he likes to break with f6 in such positions, you know. He says, uh, like, f6 really is a very interesting and... Uh, uh, f6 in this position yeah f6 is possible i mean it's not a completely illogical move f6 i, I go for a f6 break after the castle yes but why not here it's also very interesting like if he takes you can take back and then bishop d6 and castle black has no problems and if he plays castles uh, this is uh, you you usually take here fe and then white has knight e5 and d5 both the moves if he plays d5 uh, you can play knight e i don't know like this may be a possible knight e7 knight g6 bishop e7 something possible like possible but the most solid way to continue might well be like uh, cd here cd and then go knight h6 uh, knight f5 bishop e7 castle and f6 Okay. I mean, like like you can you can look at for example castles um then already knight f5 is a bit uh, irritating so knight c3 maybe here uh is the main move and then knight f5 attacking d4 and then knight a4 is played check bishop d2 and then you go i think bishop b4 and if you if you look at these lines i think black is doing pretty well here in all of these positions so i think your main yes. aim should be to look at some games here uh, but generally queen b6 taking on d4 here taking and knight h6 knight f5 bishop e7 castle and in some lines if he goes knight c3 knight a4 just queen a5 and bishop b4 which i just showed you right now uh, i guess one of the more critical lines also is a3 here instead of bishop e2 yeah this is the line which i face the most difficulty to play against yeah and many people play c4 here which is played but i think uh, if i if i'm not wrong the mo the line which i liked very much was knight h6 here again then you go b4 you can take on b4 cd cd and then knight f5 attacking the pawn on d4 and then if he plays bishop b2 
uh, I would I would think about very seriously uh, in this position. Um, there is this book by Berg in which he he considers like uh, a five at some point and then f six yes. at the right moment. So I am not sure exactly the move order, but I think it begins with bishop d seven. Uh, and if white goes bishop e2 then you can go bishop e7 here castles and castles and later on you can play f6 here i i i see this as pretty uh, uh can you directly go a5 against a3 in the earlier position uh, not really because I mean, in a way, it it does uh, weaken your light squares. Like if if he plays a4 here, maybe at some point, and then knight a3, knight b5 could come. Also, bishop d3. I think you should not be afraid of b4. Uh, generally, just I think go knight h6. He goes b4. You take. You take. You play knight f5. Let him develop to b2 or e3, only two squares. Let's say he goes to b2. Then you play bishop d7. You can quickly go to rook c8, bishop e7. And look at some games here. I, I don't see this as a problem. I, in general, advanced variation is not a dangerous opening for black if you are well prepared. If you don't prepare, white has space and then you will get slowly crushed. But if you if you know when is the right time to break, when is the right time to play a5, when is the right time to play f6, oh, if he goes g4, sometimes I can come back, sometimes I can go to h4. All this can be developed by looking at more games of top players in this line. All okay. right. I would, ha I would re really recommend you, if you are facing issues, look for Emmanuel Berg's uh, book on the French. Uh, it is available also in Chess Base India shop. You can just look at that. I think it's really he's done a great job. I usually like I usually play this, so I'm experienced with French. Uh, so the issue that I face is you, sometimes the attack on uh, like the queen side uh, from the white because like uh, as you were saying, a4 and knight uh, knight b5. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, like I am unable to defend those attacks. So. Those are the issues which I play because I'm so focused on like uh, developing the bishop, bishop f6. Sometimes I I usually go knight e7 and knight g6 also in some of the variations. Uh, let's uh, let's look at uh, this game by Ganguly. You know he's coming today on show uh, at uh, at 2 p.m. So let's uh, let's try to see if we can understand this position better. Uh, so you know his his opponent went g4. I don't know if your opponents play this uh, often, but he he Very he went back knight c3, and now you'll see how at the right moment you go this because if you take queen into b2 is coming. If you play knight yes. a4, then Surya had prepared queen c6 here. Uh, if you take on a5, a4 knight is hanging. So knight c5 was played and then he jumped in knight c4. So you see this move a4, a3, b4 has its own drawbacks. That knight a5 can come like this. And many times what white does is he even black does is gives up a pawn so that this diagonal gets opened up for his bishop. Yeah, and then g4 yes, is a weakness. Yes, and whenever so. your opponent goes g4, you can take more liberties of sacrificing material to open up the center and the queen side because there is some weaknesses on this part of the board, you know. So uh, you can you can think of it that way. Let's let's look at one more. You know how I prepare openings is generally I look at some good games and I already like let's say Nakamura when he was young. He's just 2600, but. Still, you know, g4 is the main move and you will see that a lot of people and he just won this game. I mean, there's nothing much in this game. He he managed to win an exchange. Uh, he's an exchange down, but he has a lot of uh, compensation. Um, let's look at Ponomario game. g4. You see, everyone is playing g4 uh, here. And this is the main, main move. Rook c8. 
knight g6, bishop e7, castles, and f6. You know, whenever comes the moment of uh, you have everything on the queen side, now you break in the center. And uh, I like this position for, for black. I mean, it's a counter-attacking, punching kind of a position. You know, uh, white has overextended himself and the king is suddenly start feeling the heat. And this is very common. When such a thing happens, you blast open the center and you get to his king. Okay. If he doesn't play g4 and if he just plays bishop e2, then also you can check a few games like here, say, let's say Sokolov is a is a decent, a very strong player, Andre Sokolov. And, okay, g5 is a new idea, new concept which you can think of. Idea is g4. If you take knight g5, d4 pawn hangs. Yeah. So he goes g4, then knight h4, knight into g5 and f6. And you will see that many times in this opening, white does get g4, also won a pawn. But now all of a sudden, this king doesn't know where to go. Center is disintegrating. Rooks can come in. Uh, so I, I would recommend you uh, to, to look at a few games here uh, in general. And you will get new ideas with every game. When you look at a good player, you'll be like, oh, g5, nice concept. Not something new, knight Yeah, g5 is the first time I'm seeing g5. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just plain uh, nonsense. But if you like it, you, you analyze it a bit more, you'll be like, okay, makes sense. If he goes h3, I can go h5. Maybe idea is anyway to long castle. And then rook g8, g4. Yeah. Nice, interesting stuff. Yes. Okay. Chirag, uh, anything else? No, I think so. That's about yes, it. Thank you. And I think uh, play the French. I, I like this. In fact, I'll be dedicating one lecture at least in my opening series to the French with black. So could be useful for you. Surely I'll attend that one. Okay. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you a lot. Bye. Yeah, this was good. I don't know. I think I will end today. Uh, just maybe I will uh, talk to Sumed once because he was there in the room and maybe Sumed has been waiting for a long time. By the way, a big thanks to Ajinkya Atle who says, so all 30 of your improving chess videos with the comedians and now a live session forever indebted to you cannot thank you enough thank you so much ajinkya uh, that's a huge contribution from your end uh, very very kind of you uh, thanks once again mahesh kotapalli says thank you for sharing your chess knowledge thank you mahesh uh, for your super chat devin anand devin anand the man who beat vaibo yesterday from australia uh, Devin Anand, great initiative, Sagar. Thank you, Devin. Thanks, everyone who, who has attended here. Sumit, can you hear me? I don't think Sumit can hear me. He can? Okay. I can't hear you, Sumit. Maybe you need to go into the settings and fix your microphone, but we can see you. I must say the viewers, tell the viewers that since two months I have been doing uh, live streams and Sumed has been a very constant in each one of them, improving at chess, uh, working on chess, doing all the homework that was given, Sumed, uh, somehow I can't hear you. Okay, maybe his internet is an issue there. Uh, but maybe next time, Sumed, uh, I can see you blurred. You know, your first time I can see your image. <clears throat> so we know how you look like. Okay. So, guys, uh, that was the first episode of Dr. Chess. Uh, and I guess it was quite intense. We spoke to uh, Aryan. Aryan uh, first, then we spoke to Aryasha, then we spoke to Setu Minocha, then Ajinkya Atle, and finally we spoke to Chirag. Five people, 
okay the main idea is that many of your doubts also would have been cleared by this session so i hope that it was not like you were waiting and i hope to that more people can can join in in the future but it was a good um, attempt i guess everything worked well uh, guys did you enjoy did was it useful for you please let me know in the chat for people who weren't there if you found it useful uh, let me know if you have any suggestions also please know uh, and you can also send me your games uh, with on chessbaseindia at gmail.com and you know maybe if we have a session like this like how Ajinkya shared his game I think that was very useful because I can exactly know uh, how where you are lacking and so on Gurkirat Singh says thank you Sagar for that session okay Mayur Gondalekar enjoyed a lot but I have to watch this later again and jot down all the advice Mm, yes do like the streams do do like the stream and so that uh, it can get recommended to more people very useful yes we'll do this once every week so next one uh, on next Thursday and yeah that's about it uh, i'll see you guys uh, today evening today afternoon at 2 p.m there is a live show with surya shekhar ganguly please join in it's a fundraiser show uh, and if you can contribute towards the good cause it would be very nice so looking forward to that take care bye bye and uh, see you later bye